In this video of the Better Photography Weekly Challenge, we will be discussing the winners and honorable mentions of Reveries of a Minimalistic World Contest. Our judge and mentor is Janvi Shimha. Hi, Janvi. Hello. How are you? I'm good. Cold and good. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> she is an independent visual artist with a background in journalism modern and contemporary Indian art, as well as curatorial studies. Janvi works with multiple media and materials to pursue her research interests that lie primarily in ecofeminism, migration, and memory. She has published and exhibited her work relating to these subjects, both locally and internationally. She is currently earning her MFA Fine Arts from Nottingham Trent University. Hi, Nilufa. Hello. So I would like to know what were your thoughts about the entries that you've seen so far? Uh, I, th I thought there were so many wonderful entries that we got, you know, mm -hmm. and uh, it was very difficult to really pick uh, or shortlist the winners because uh, some of them were like, you know, beautiful and would have been stronger as a series i thought then there were uh, some really striking uh, single images and there were so many uh, but i'm happy with the ones that we have shortlisted and let's talk about those sure let's get into it yes <laughs> okay let's start with the first one of the camera category um yeah i absolutely loved uh, this image, not just, you know, because it's, uh, you know how when you're living in a city like Bombay, looking out of the window from a tall height is one of the favorite pastimes of most of us. I mean, we've experienced this looking out the window and seeing down at, you know, whatever is happening down at the street. So I've always found this perspective extremely uh, interesting. But this image, you know, there's a very clear divide mm. uh, of lamppost. And in the left, you see there's a woman, you know, sort of being helped and pushed uh, in uh, a cart, like, you know, in a wheelchair, I think. And there is uh, uh, someone doing the same thing to a plant. So there's, I think there's a very beautiful parallel of nurture here, you know, to like tending to someone that someone could be a plant. And like, there's a very beautiful sense of dependence and like, taking care of that's being captured. So I think it's a very, very tender, very nice image. Love the colors. And it reminds me of uh, Samir Kulavur's paintings. Uh, there's this uh, wonderful show that he did in Tark last year, I think. It was just this perspective, you know, gray roads and like colorful figurines with shadows. And uh, it, was, it was beautiful. I think it would be nice reference point for Amod to look into. Let's talk about the second one. Um, yeah, this is such a lovely, like, you know how you've seen so many images of like kids jumping in like puddles of water around India. It is a familiar visual. You've seen it across villages, across geographies, you know, it's one of the things that kids love to do during rain. But whenever this image is captured, it's always like, you know, the splash that's focused on. People usually focus on like when, when I've seen a lot of photographs when like, you know, the focus is on the splash of water and the grandness of it. Hmm. I love how the image is like in between sinking. Like it's just about like the, it's that moment just before sinking or drowning when it's not about the splash at all. It's about the ripples that are created. You know, it's such a, wholesome image almost as if the water is like eating the kid up it's, it's like it reminds you of your curious childhood days you know like your swami and friend stories your malgudi vibes you know and uh, i really love i really love this image I, I think it's it's very tender and very beautiful yeah uh this kind of reminded me of you know you often see kids trying to make snow angels so when I first saw this, it's like <laughs> trying to make a water angel because it's just a space and that is like con yeah. eloped in it. So that's, yeah. that's kind of interesting. Yeah. 
Very beautiful. Yeah, definitely. And I wonder how it's shot. Like, where was the photographer here when this was shot? Like, this looks like a aerial perspective, you know, again, like. So this person has taken this image from a bridge. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that explains it. <laughs> Lovely. It's beautiful. Oh, yeah, this one. Uh, <laughs> I love how that like, you know, like, first of all, like there's one little patch of light that's falling in and, you know, that is highlighting whatever needs to be highlighted. And somehow I really like that this photograph is not about the person, but the activity of, of, mm -hmm. you know, uh, making a garland of flowers. So like this weaving that is going on, the thread that is highlighted, it's, that's the protagonist of the story, not really the person, not really, uh, you know, uh, anything else. It's just the occupation, I think, that is the story. And I think it's, it's a beautiful image. And it's very uh, difficult to find such, uh, you know, such light and such like, it almost seems composed and, you know, very well, uh, or organized and it's a street shot for sure so I think it's commendable it, it's very nicely done it's uh, is it uh, it reminds me of those uh, flower markets near the other where you see such uh, like you know tiny those quaint shops where the weaving happens as you go around but uh, I think this was shot in Pune then I guess yeah uh, I'm acquainted with Manisha's work and, uh, I admire it and uh, I was not familiar with this visual but I like its triangular uh, composition and uh, I feel like it's very well extremely well composed almost like looks like it is you know it is drawn it's painterly uh, but I would also like to like wonder since you know shooting in exotic locations like wherever this was, the zebra, so definitely not in India, maybe Africa or wherever, uh, is not something that a lot of people can avail or afford. So when you're there and when you're shooting images there, uh, it is also uh, curious if there's a way the photographer could include like, uh, you know, the perspective of having been in that place, the fact that it's not, uh, a, you know, Indian geography. Could, could like cultural aspects be included? Could photojournalistic documentary aspects be included? You know, uh, but at, a, at a one glance, at a single glance, this is quite a perfect uh, image. The cloud almost as if it's balancing the zebra and the tree, you know, like a puppeteer controlling the two elements. So yeah, I think it's lovely. <laughs> And again, like Himadri's image is like surreal and painterly, very much like Manish's, very uh, uh, out of the worldly, you know, magical. And uh, this is again, I wanted to compare like being in, like the previous image was like, you know, photographing in an exotic place and like a um, place like Africa. And this is perhaps like a domestic nature visual, like, you know, something that is available to a lot of so here, you know, uh, waiting for the particular light to fall, like waiting for the right uh, hour of the day for those droplets to shine the way they are shining is the key, you know, in finding and making something very uh, everyday into like such a magical, magical moment. And uh, I, I especially love how, you know, the birds are, uh, flying the wings are like fluttering about but there's the one leaf that's present is also almost as, as if it's an open wing and uh, there's so much play in the photograph and uh, I think it's beautiful I wonder how this photo would have been if there was a human like if there was a person in the foreground uh, you know witnessing this so but it's it's lovely as it is as well, as well yeah Uh, again, like, 
you know in the uh, video that i had spoken uh, i mentioned a lot about like you know repetition of form and is there a way to use like shapes and echoes of shapes into into making a very simple image very interesting and uh, i think uh, aman's photo does that very well like it's almost as if it's a boat within a boat and uh, uh, it's very perfectly balanced it's almost like you know hanging put being pulled together the elements that are used are also very much like the materials uh, in the everyday uh, fisherman's life you know there's a rope there's a a uh, cloth and the way it's composed how the boat is like completely in the center of the image i think it's very well composed very well balanced again i feel uh, since this is how would it be to add a life to the landscape like there all already is like you know like a painting in the background like there's a boat going back but if there was say somebody passing by ahead of this frame if there was uh somebody sitting ahead of this frame and behind there was this curtain like cloth and and a boat in behind it i think the image would have been even more striking than it is right now uh but i think this is a very defining uh sort of an image make like a nice cover of a book you know something that invites you in and like you know tells you there's more to the story than it is shown so yeah <laughs> ah <laughs> this also like again uh, i think it is um a splash of wave on a mirror is it a mirror because uh, i i feel like there is like shadows and whatever is being reflected in the wall being seen in the mirror uh, i don't know but the shape behind the, that shadow or looks like you know the the pointedness of a boat again there is a splash there is a tide and i feel when i when i saw this image for the first time i i was like if i was around this area i would have definitely shot it i would have definitely made this moment as well you know i would have shot this myself it, it is one of those i love that it's it's an abstract image there's a uh, a uh, quite literally a painting a graphic element to it the shadows are very well uh, composed and it's like finding a bit of abstraction in the material object that's lying around and it tells such a beautiful story to it i think yeah this person has painted uh, the great wave onto a mirror and wow Yeah. I didn't know it was own painting. I thought it was a found uh, object uh, lying around. In the, yeah, so he has actually painted it on the mirror. Wow, that's beautiful. That's lovely. Now I like it even more. <laughs> very very surreal. <laughs> yeah, very surreal. And this is the winning image again. it was very confusing to be on it to pick one and i you know i uh, kept changing my mind again and again but uh i did linger on this one instinctively the first time i saw it uh, a because it's curious i don't know how it must have been shot firstly you know i i stopped to wonder if it's a double exposure because if you zoom in and you see are, i don't know are these pelicans are, are these uh what bird is it uh, but like if you zoom in you see like uh, but i like yeah. but I, you know when you look at it uh, you see like there's a sense of convergence coming in the fly the line of birds in the sky and the line of birds in the water sort of converging into the person that's witnessing it so i feel like that point uh, in the right where you see a silhouette of a human being uh that makes the image for me like it is like witnessing the witness witnessing the landscape you know it is there is an echo here there is a duality here and uh the fact that there are so many elements yet it is so minimalistic uh is is a masterly stroke like i don't think a lot of people can do that you know using so many elements making it into a such a such a simple image 
So I went with my first gut feeling and chose this one because it was my, yeah, I liked it. I, I think it's beautiful. Ah, okay, yeah. So the smartphone category, uh, the first one, um, you know, I, it's very obvious what the image is about, you know, and uh, the commentary that it makes in today's time and like, you know, the connectedness in isolation, like in your own boxes, in your own, like whatever, isolate homes and you're connected through a wire. But it's interesting that there is a contemporary con uh, commentary uh, being showcased using a uh, element of a bygone time, you know, these wired phones and uh, this sense of connection that used to be. But what draw, uh, draws me most to this photograph is that perhaps it's a mother-daughter story. If you see the hands, they're all both feminine hands. Uh, the left one is possibly uh, a daughter, the right one is possibly a mother. And like there's a distance, there's a social distance and there is a connection and uh, yeah, it's very nice, it's beautiful. And I think it, again, like I think it holds a uh, potential for it to evolve into a series with just hands and like everyday objects sort of comment on what goes on in today's time. Like, is there a way to use uh, spectacles and do something is there a way to use uh, smartphones and do something but just like the use of hands and you know uh, how how they can be used against like plain blank walls to compose a story so yeah <laughs> oh yeah this is also a beautiful photograph it's so familiar it's something you've everyone has seen but the way it's shot I think you know how you, sometimes I, I feel like people are always seeking a grand story, like, you know, in a photograph, but it's always like these very simple moments that, uh, that make a story so beautiful. Like maybe the story is just about somebody who managed to do their chores today. Like they managed to do their laundry today and that's enough, you know, to, to, to uh, think that that story is quite enough. And the patch of light is not just like adding to the story, but it's also uh, showing the utilitarian aspect of sunlight, quite literally being used as a means to dry soaked clothes, you know, and uh, the shadow of that against the door. I think it's, it works perfectly. It's, it's, a, it's very, nostalgic to be honest like it's beautiful i kind of like the fact that you know how um without seeing what is there it's just with a shadow it's a lot of things that are going on in my head okay so whose clothes are there is this a family yeah. or is this a single person yeah so, yeah so i really like this image for that fact like you know without yeah. really showing you you've sort of got my attention definitely definitely <laughs> And it's so perfect. Like, I don't know if I would change anything in that visual at all. Same. I like the serrated lines on the top, you know, I like the colors. It's just perfect. <laughs> Again, this, you know, when you talk about curiosity, I think this is one of those questions that make you ask, like, what? What is an A? You know, <laughs> who is this A? Or <laughs> is this like a murder mystery plot or you know uh, uh, it's very abstract it's something that the person possibly just saw on the road but like that little bit of yellow alphabet there just like adds to adds this very interesting abstract dimension to the story and uh, the chain of course you know like uh, it's I mean I'm smiling about it but definitely the photograph evokes uh, you know, uh, torment. It 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 evokes uh, freeing from the chain. You know those those emotions, that confinement, that slaughter, and uh, yet does it in this very uh, everyday witty sort of a way. So yeah, I think it it works. I think this image wouldn't have been so curious without that letter A there like you know what is that a 
yeah so this what do you first, think i yeah like i mean first i thought okay where is the food coming from because <laughs> it's it's not like every day you'll come across something like this unless you're probably in a market and yeah. uh so rajiv says that uh, this particular image is uh, his idea behind it is that it it talks about mm-hmm. of humanity and men being chained governed by their limitations and desires and social barriers mm-hmm. yeah mm-hmm. yeah that that really comes through i feel you know it it does come through but like that a all, also remains a question mark like if if that were not present i wouldn't uh, think of anything else but that but the thing that he is re- but that adds like this very uh, like a, an interesting abstract sort of a dimension to it like it's something that just is present you know like a witness to the crime or something like that you know um but yeah it's it's uh, an image definitely that makes you linger around it for a bit mm-hmm. again like you know uh, one of the images that i think i would have made <laughs> uh, <laughs> there is a uh, hill top there is a fog and there are these two women like deep in conversation and and yeah there's so much to it simply in that simple simplicity you know and there's wind there's a little bit of flare in the sari and and uh, i don't know where it is thrissur is the image made in thrissur in kerala um, and definitely feels like a touristy spot like who are they visiting there are they family do they meet there to talk do they go there often to speak you know these conversations sort of come to mind like this idea of saheli mm. and like friendship and yeah so this was shot outside a monastery on top of a hill mhm wow so stunning Yeah this was definite a definite winner without a doubt I mean <laughs> this expression of the dancer is of fear like it is of start being startled and like being like you know uh, shocked or scared and you know all those things and definitely the reaction that you would expect if suddenly a lizard pops in like you know near you and like that fear of lizard is sort of exaggerated in the way that it is and i've seen so many like uh, photographers document uh, kathakali dancers and you know the the art form is stunning i've witnessed it i've seen uh, live kathakali performances when i was in kerala but uh, uh never seen it being used in a domestic space like never seen it uh kathakali mask photographed in the way that it's being photographed with a lizard and again i feel like this is definitely one of the things that one of the uh, uh, images that could be explored into a series it has a potential imagine like taking the traditional kathakali out of its traditionality and its stage and into the contemporary and into the everyday and uh there are all these expressions and em- like emotions that are a part of the performance in in kathakali you know there is love there is fear there is uh all these adjectives and all these emotions are sort of highlighted as a performance and if they were to be used in domestic spaces i think it would be wonderful and uh you know cindy sherman's work like how she uses performance in like exaggerated makeup in her photographs or say the recent uh gori gills uh, uh series with the masks hmm. in the villages and how like you know is again that was a myth again that was like a festival that was a common but like picking something there and like placing it in out out of its context and how that creates a very striking image so yeah i think this would be beautifully explored if it was a series and the pro do do something about it yeah. 
I like how the lizard is also there and because of the flash, its eyes its kind of shiny. Yeah. It's a moment of you two yeah. looking at each other. It kind of reminds me of that. Yeah, like like the lizard is also reacting to the presence of the person for sure, like yeah. escaping there, like you know, like out of here. It's quite perfect. <laughs> I wish I made this image. Yeah, I wish that too. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, congratulations to the winners and uh, uh, and also the people who sent their work. It was not easy to choose. And I am nobody to decide anything. So <laughs> I'm sure everyone is doing amazing work and they should just keep photographing. Thank you so much.